Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about how to land a job. And as um, uh, Martin said, I'm the knowledge manager in the NetLife Research. It is a rather pretentious title, but uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually a knowledge manager. And uh, uh, probably going to skip this slide. You probably know my name now. But uh, a bit more about NetLife Research, because we. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about our company, but uh, regarding what I'm going to say about how to sort of uh, how to get a job, it's uh, it's nice to know a little bit about us because we are sort of a digital design company. We are 69 employees here in Oslo. Uh, we design websites, we design intranets, we design apps, um, and everything we do. I mean, we call NetLife Research. So we do things based on research. We are not just designing stuff based on our intuition. Um, so we are sort of problem solvers, um, and people at NetLife are sort of basically everything. Uh, we have journalists, uh, we have PhD, uh, people with the PhD background, we have psychologists, we have copywriters, we have uh, project managers, um, we have people who specialize in user behaviors. We have coders. I think one thing that sort of, uh, if, to summarize everybody in NetLife, there's one thing we all have in common is that we are nerds. We are big, big nerds. Uh, not in the sense that we don't, I mean, we are able to talk to people. We are not so nerds that don't, can't talk, but we are sort of extremely engaged in what we do. Um, we also arranged sort of the biggest web conference in Norway. And uh, if you see at sort of the history of NetLife, we have sort of grown from 20 to 70 people in the last six years. I was actually uh, employed here in 2009 as the first journalist or as the first uh, copywriter in, in NetLife. And uh, in 2011, I was sort of the knowledge manager, and since then I've probably recruited 30 or 40 people in NetLife. Uh, so, how to apply for a job in NetLife? What do you actually have to do? I get probably 150 uh, applications every month, uh, so it's a lot. And I get a lot of applications, even though we don't have any specific uh, stealing uh, out, yeah, position out. So uh, there is sort of a you have to sort of communicate really good to actually get through to me. Um, so I think sort of the, the the one thing that I always look at when people are applying for a job at NetLife is what have you actually done? Can you show me something? Can you show me something that you have done uh, some examples of your work. That's one extremely uh, important thing. And even though people, uh, for instance, come directly from, uh, from uh, universities, I still ask the same. Can you sort of show me something? Uh, and some people then say, uh, but, I, but I haven't been employed before. Yeah, but you could have done something on your spare time. You could have done something as a student. Show me something. So. I mean, yeah, we have designers, they show us their portfolios, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a portfolio. Uh, I mean, uh, sometimes a blog, a blog that demonstrates what you actually are capable of doing, telling stories, could be important. This is Ida, uh, Ida Jackson's blog, uh, who you probably know. Uh, I am uh, from, uh, this is uh, Bjarte, he was employed uh, last summer. Uh, he uh, studied at Aho. he had done a master uh, thesis there on uh, service design. Uh, but he had actually done a project uh, which was sort of weird and crazy, but still fun, relevant. Um, I could see that there was stuff there that we could use in our sort of uh, everyday life in, in net life. So do as a show something, examples, something that's relevant for us. That's one sort of important thing. Uh, another thing uh, that a lot of people ask me about is what about the grades? Is grades important? 
yes, grades is important. Um, it's nice to look at grades and see that people actually have done sort of, uh, yeah, that they are good at what they have studied. Uh, but it's not the only thing. It's, it's one component uh, of what we actually do look at. So yes, please include your grades. Uh, but it's also sort of important, of course, to present yourself well. We have, you have probably heard more about this earlier today. But to see the LinkedIn profile uh, and make sure that the LinkedIn profile is easy to understand. Test it on uh, a colleague. Test it on a friend. Uh, do I communicate good at what I'm actually good at? Um, it's not that difficult. And then, of course, the obvious, write the good application. Yes, the good, uh, and good application is important. Uh, this is one uh, guy who actually applied for a position. He didn't get the job. <laughs> uh, but uh, here's one example of sort of how to actually sort of communicate directly to me or to another person who is sort of in a, in a recruiting position. It's easy, it's, it's, it's easy to see. I'm scanning a lot of applications every month, so it's, it has to be easy for me to see. Uh, another tip is to be relentless. This is Hanna. She was, uh, uh, she was basically stalking me in uh, three weeks. She called everybody she, know, she knew in NetLife. Uh, she had uh, sent in an application. I didn't, I, to tell the truth, I hadn't read all of it. I just scanned it and thought, okay, yeah, she's just come out of studies. I'm looking for someone more experienced. She uh, called three other persons she knew in NetLife. Uh, and in the end, she called me and she said, uh, just give me uh, 10 minutes away. Just give me 10 minutes. And those 10 minutes actually convinced me that she, okay, she had just, uh, I was looking for a more senior person. But uh, in those 10 minutes, she actually convinced me that she was much more senior than she sort of uh, looked like in her application. And then also, we do actually have people in NetLife without higher education at all. Uh, this is Eivind. Um, I think he has uh, videregående skole, uh, and that's all. Um, so, and that gives me sort of a bridge into the third, my third point is that we hire you, not only your skills. So person capabilities, uh, we, are just, also, we are not just trying to find the right skills for the job, we are trying to find the right person. So we have to sort of not necessarily be likable, but you have to come through as a person, as a person that we would think of as nice and good to work with, because that's, that's a big part of the job. And at least in our company, we love our work, we love our colleagues, and we spend a lot of time at work. So we have to be sort of a person that's, that's easy to work with. In NetLife, we also have sort of the Ten Commandments for NetLife Research, uh, which we sort of look at when we employ people. Is this a person who uh, likes to work together with others? Is this a person who likes to talk to people? Is this a person who likes to help others? You don't necessarily have to be good at all these things, but you have to be good at some of them. Um, to some, this is sort of look like bullshit company values, but uh, yeah, it does. But, but I think to us, and, and if you're smart as a, as a company, these are sort of the values that you use to sort of uh, actually get the company moving forward. Uh, this is Reed Hastings from Netflix. He said, actually, company values, as opposed to the nice sounding values, are shown by who gets rewarded, promoted, or let go. We have fun at work. We, uh, we, we, this is uh, Maria and, uh, and Synve. They are uh, doing user testing at Oslo City. Uh, dressed out as uh, Santa Clauses, um, and we work together as much as possible. So, uh, basically, you have to be much more than your skills. You have to be a sort of a person that we can see that, yeah, you're, you're a person that fits in our environment. And the last thing, uh, be relevant. 
a lot of people forget that, but research us. Research uh, the company that you want to sort of apply for a position in. Find out what they really, really need. Because there's a lot of differences. I mean, when I say I search for interaction designer in NetLife, that could be something completely opposite, for instance, for a, a, an interaction designer in another company. So research, find out what they actually are looking for. Extremely important. And make yourself relevant, because it's about sort of looking at your own CV, it's about looking at your uh, application, and, and saying, okay, but how does this fit this company? If I were in this uh, employee's shoes, would I sort of apply, uh, would I hire myself? So it's about sort of looking at your assets and the needs of the company that you're applying a position for, and finding sort of the, the green spots in between. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I studied at the University of California, uh, uh, I think it was Berkeley, that found that 47% of graduate students suffer from depression. So I'm going to be a bit positive here. Uh, because there are sort of a lot of stuff from your, from your days of studying that are really relevant for a lot of, at least for us, and I think for, for, uh, for, for a lot of other companies. I said that it's important to work together with people, but it's also really, really important to work independently. And I think you learn that. You are good at it. You have learned it uh, through your PhD. And your knowledge about methods, extremely important. Um, and you can work with a long-term perspective. That's what you actually do. And you're used to getting feedback all the time. Uh, and also through peer reviews. And the last thing, as I said, which are extremely important at NetLife, and hopefully in, uh, in a lot of other businesses as well, is you're passionate about the subject. So these are the things that you have to sort of, I think it's important to take with you when you are sort of going to, an, to a company to get employed. But there are also things that you need to learn. Uh, and I think sort of one thing is, as a student, you're pretty much completely free to follow your impulses, or at least much more free to, to follow your impulses and create something that is just the way you want it. And as students and teachers, you have to sort of, when you are working in a company like NetLife, you have to sort of deal with customers, you have to deal with managers, you have to deal with different kinds of stakeholders. There are these boundaries that you have to sort of uh, relate to. And uh, it's much more about sort of a, a, a reality, which are sort of the business needs to, uh, to realize some goals. It's about earning money, it's about uh, uh, saving money, it's about building a brand. So you have to sort of understand the boundaries of the business that you're actually sort of applying to, and what their goals actually are. Um, uh, for instance, in our workplace, in NetLife, this is sort of, we are sort of an agency, but in our work, workplace, you have to estimate how many hours uh, for everything that you do. If, if I'm going to work with uh, the University of Oslo, I have to estimate the hours that I'm going to spend on that project. And if I'm, going, if I'm working more than the hours that I have actually estimated, then it's uh, sort of... Uh, it's not, a, it's not a smart thing to come to the University of Oslo and say that I've spent 100 hours more than I actually estimated. You can't do that. So you have to, you set up an estimate and you have to stick to that. So you can't work day and night because you have other projects. And if you work day and night on one project, that would sort of uh, mess up all the other projects. So you have to be really accurate about your time and spend your time sort of really uh, wise. And sometimes that means that you have to sort of hand things over. Or you, you can't work that much on things that you uh, actually did as a student. You've, you always want to spend more time on stuff, but you have, don't have actually the time. And that gives me sort of, it goes into the next point, you can't research forever as well. You have to work with what you actually have, and that may not always be as good as you 
uh, or not be even be uh, not always be good uh, enough according to what you learned when you studied. May be sort of a difference there. So it's more about iterations, faster testing, building, improving stuff. Um, um, instead of spending three months on researching, we spend less time on researching, but we, we research more sort of specific subjects. And I think I read a book a couple of years ago, which are called Just Enough Research. And uh, uh, this is a woman called Erika Hall. Uh, it's, a, it's a really practical book about doing research in, uh, in uh, different kinds of situations. Uh, and she said, to make the best use of your time and truly do just enough research, try to identify your highest priority questions, your assumption that carry the biggest risk. And the main problem working in sort of the business world isn't that the research isn't good enough. The main problem is that we don't do research at all. That's the main problem. So it's better with just enough research than uh, doing research all the time. Another thing is that nobody cares about the reports. This is the history of NetLife Research. We started with the first five years. I wasn't uh, employed then, but Justin, who was one of the founders, uh, has told me so many times, we spend a lot of time making these detailed reports that nobody actually read. Uh, and they did reports, for instance, from user testing, and it was so detailed and so well-crafted, but nobody read them. So, I think the thing is that you have to sort of, it's important, the results are important, but you have to communicate them in a much smarter way than making just a big, big report. Communicate the essence and communicate the actions. What, are you, what am I supposed to do with this research? What are the actions to do? How to improve? And even though, even though we do actually do a lot of research, you still have to convince all the managers that you are right, because they don't, sometimes, they don't care about research. They say that there's other sort of stakeholders or other manager that want this and that, so don't care about research, I will do it this way anyway. And uh, the last thing, uh, your ID, ID still may not always be implemented. That's sort of one thing that you have to sort of grasp. And the last thing, uh, I would sort of give sort of a, an, an advice for you. I think that with qualitative and quantitative methods, um, uh, you are sort of uh, you already know this, but use it to sort of test your solutions, test your ideas. Uh, it makes for a stronger argument. So make sure that anything you create or anything you work with are, are understood. And the best way to do it is by testing. This is an example from Plan Norge, which uh, Ida Olm in Netlab actually worked with. And she told me that every time she presented, for instance, this is a very some design centric thinking, but every, every time she, 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 she presented a new solution, a new design, a new iteration of the design, she always had tested it on users. Because then she was actually, uh, the argument wasn't about the design, the argument was about the testing. And that's a much better argument to have than actually this, ah, oh, I don't like the color. But then you can say, okay, the user didn't care about the colors. They didn't, uh, actually, they, they couldn't apply here. That was the main problem. So back all the things you do up with testing, with, uh, with, uh, with research, always a good thing, but uh, research smaller. This is Ida testing again. Uh, she has a goodie bag. Every, she, she was, this is what we call guerrilla testing. You go out on the street and uh, give people an iPad and make them test stuff. And you give them some sweets, some chocolates, so they can't say no. <laughs> that is, it's brilliant. I've done it a lot myself. So that is, uh, yeah, that's sort of the, the advice I have to you. Sort of use, use your best capabilities and um, uh, make yourself relevant for us. Uh, and always, always sort of think, show, don't tell. Thanks. Okay, so uh, are there any questions in the audience? Everything was understood completely. No question? Then I have one. So what do you think is the best asset of a PhD candidate right out of the University of Oslo, and in particular the Faculty of Na Mathematics and Natural Sciences? Um, 
I, it's, it's difficult to talk in general, but I think sort of the things that I mentioned uh, earlier about sort of uh, the knowledge about methods, using methods wisely, using the methods smart, is, is something that if you use methods to sort of back up your arguments, you always have a way of winning a, or sort of coming through in a discussion. I think that's extremely important. And also the ability to, to, to work independently, to sort of have the ability to actually, you don't have to sort of be micromanaged all the time. Uh, you can work independently, extremely, I mean, extremely important, at least at our company, and I think in every company uh, in, in, in the years ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Uwe. It's uh, been wonderful listening to you and hearing what NetLife Research thinks uh, you need to get a job at your company. So here you are. Thank you. Thank you so much.